Hi guys, this is Wayne Dixon here for CG Cookie. And what I'll be doing today is showing you a quick way of how to loop your animation using the video sequence editor. So here inside my uh, viewport, I've got a 2D bouncing ball done with uh, grease pencil here, and I wanna loop this multiple times. All right, so the first thing we need to do is output our video from this working file that we're working on now. So let me just close this window by uh, clicking in the very corner there and dragging up. You can see it's just gonna give you a lot more room so you can see what I'm doing. And I need to check my output settings. So over here in the uh, render tab, uh, here is my render engine. For me, I'm not too concerned uh, with this because I'm actually gonna do the viewport render uh, rather than the final render. And I will talk about color management a little bit later on because when you are doing that, it's uh, when you do the viewport renders, it, the colors could be slightly different. So I'll show you how to match that as closely as possible. But the next thing to make sure that we do is check our actual output settings. So this is a tab here, output. Uh, here is our resolution, 1920 by 1080. Our frame rate is 24 frames per second. And here's all that output. So where are we gonna put it? What I like to do is save it in a subfolder of the, the same working directory where I am. So a handy way of doing that and getting Blender to create that folder for you is just starting with a double slash and then type in the name of the folder, which I like to call render, and then having another slash and then give your output file a name. Now you can use any output format that you want, an image sequence or any type of video. I'm gonna choose a, an MP4 file, so let me name it. So 2D bouncing ball.mp4. Uh, and because I've given it the um, MP4 here, when it saves a file, it won't append the frame numbers to, to the file name. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna choose the right file format first though. I'm gonna to go to M FFmpeg and then down to our encoding and change it from Matroska to MP4. And I can leave everything else as default. So now when I uh, hit render, it's going to output to this location. And just to prove to you uh, that that location doesn't exist, this here is my working file that I'm currently have open here. And when I hit render, it's going to uh, create a subfolder in this uh, particular um, location here. All right, so where are the render outputs? Well. You have two particular spots that you can check. So up here in the render menu, we this is where we can render a still image with uh, render image. And here's how we render the whole entire animation. So from frame one to frame 17 in this case. We can tell it's frame 17 because that's our end frame here. Uh, if we just want to do a viewport render, then we have a look inside our viewport inside this uh, menu called view. And then down here we have viewport render and viewport render animation. And that's of course the same thing, but we'll just be uh, spitting out what's inside our viewport here. All right, so let me just show you what happens if we uh, do a still render here. Uh, you can see it's rendered it out and it looks like my whole entire interface has disappeared. Well, that it hasn't, it's just hidden behind a new window. So I actually don't like that behavior. The way to change it is in your render menu, go to display mode, and then choose a different option. What I like to do is choose uh, image editor, and that would change this window here temporarily to be a, an image editor so you can view the output. So let's try that again. So go view, render animation, and uh, zoom out a little bit. Uh, you can see, okay, now it's inside my, my window here. If I wanna get back to the uh, 3D viewport, I just hit the escape key, and there we go, we're instantly back. If I wanna view that again, if I've already previously done a render, we go to the render menu and then go view render, which is uh, F11 is the shortcut there. And we jump straight back to where we were. Okay, uh, now this tip is only for people who are more interested in the viewport renders rather than the final renders. Uh, so as an animator, I do a lot of viewport renders and I'd like the colors to match a lot more closely um, with what our actual viewport representation is here. So let me bring that back and view render. The way we do that is back in our color management that I mentioned before. So we're gonna go down to color management. Now by default, the uh, default setting is not default, it is uh, filmic. So I'm gonna change it back to being default. And you can see, ah, my white is a lot wider, but the, the colors are not quite right yet. So I haven't found an option here inside our look to be quite right, but the closest I've found is very high contrast, which is just above none there. And you can see now our colors are a lot closer to the way that I want them to look. How do we get rid of this um, origin inside our um, render here, well, we just jump back to our actual viewport and we can just turn off our overlays here and voila, it is gone. All right, so now we're ready to output this. I'm going to choose um, inside our view here, I'm gonna choose viewport render animation and that's gonna spit out our, uh, our full animation. 
So there we go, we can see our full uh, frame range playing. And that has created that file that I mentioned. Let me just bring it up here. You can see we've got that folder called render and we have a 2D ball animation. All right, so now how do we loop this video multiple times? The easiest way to do that is inside a brand new Blender file. So uh, make sure that you save all the work that you, you've done in this file. And then we go File, New. We can choose uh, any template that we like, but the one that's set up for our needs the best is the video editing uh, option here. You see this is our video sequence editor all ready to start work. So down here, I need to add that video in. So I can hit Shift A and then choose uh, any option here. If we chose an image sequence, we would choose this one here, but we need a movie. So we can choose a movie here and then locate where that particular um, video was, or we can just drop and drag. So let me just drop and drag, because that is way easier. Uh, and now we just need to duplicate this multiple times. So I'm gonna hit Shift D, drag it and snap it. Uh, now you can see when it's um, red uh, and I confirm, it's gonna snap to the first available um, space on our uh, track here and that's really handy so I can just uh, duplicate it multiple times so there we go five times and then I need to make sure I change the end setting so that is uh, it's not going to be in line with our last frame here it's going to be one frame back because it's displaying that current frame at the at this uh, moment so what frame is that that is frame 85 I'm going to type 85 into my uh, end frame there and now I need to output this particular uh, video that's inside our sequence editor. So let's check all our settings. Let's go, uh, it doesn't really matter what the render engine is because we're using our video sequence editor. Inside our output, uh, we need to go down to uh, the output here. I'm gonna change this to be into that same location. Now, uh, it's gonna have a, a little bit of an error because we haven't saved this file yet, but I'll show you, I'll show you what I mean. So let's give it a name. 2D bouncing ball final, and then uh, an extension MP4. I want to make this a MP4 video. The encoding is going to be MP4. Leave everything else the same. Now, because we are using the video sequence editor, just make sure down here in the post processing that the video sequencer is active. And that means it's going to use the data that's inside our video sequence editor here. All right, so I'm ready to output this. I can choose render and then render animation. I don't want to choose, I don't want to render the viewport anymore. I've already done that. So let's choose render animation. And you'll see that we get a result which is blank. So, oh, what happened? Well, that comes down to our settings over here. Because we have uh, our double slash here, what that means is I want you to uh, save this file in the current working directory. Uh, called render and then uh, here is the file name. But because we haven't saved this file, there is no current working directory. So the easiest way to do that is just to save this file that we're working on and then it will know. So if I go file, save, and then it's gonna bring up the last location that we're working, which is really handy, and give it a name. I'm just gonna call this video edit. And now when we hit file, render animation, it's going to play and loop that animation five times. All right, just to show you what I mean, uh, here inside that render folder, we now have 2D bouncing ball final. Let's bring it up here and you can see, this is our video. It's looping one, two, three, four, five times. Yay! So there we go, that's how you can loop your clip multiple times inside the video sequence editor.